Good morning and welcome to Hill Lane. Welcome those online who uh, can't make it this morning. Uh, we're going to start with a word of prayer. Dear loving Father, thank you so much that uh, we're free to come and join together this morning here at this little church in Black Dog. And we just thank you for what this church means to each and every one of us. We just thank you for the community, the love, and the support that this church gives to each and one, every one of us. We just thank you also for Paul, who's come to uh, minister to us this morning. And we just thank you for everybody in this church that has a, does, takes part in whatever size, small, medium, or large. And we just thank you for their selfless giving of their time. Amen. Um, we've got lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of... Uh, announcements this morning before uh, we start. David, I'm going to pick on you first, please. Uh, you'll have seen on the prayer chain that John John Harford had not been well. Uh, he's taken into hospital a day or two ago. Um, I had an update this morning. I dropped in to see Alison and the family and um, Naomi said that They've found out where the bleed is now. It's a stomach ulcer, which is a bit of a relief to John in a way, I think. And um, so he's on 72-hour drip at the moment. Won't be home before at least Wednesday, uh, but he's a little bit better than he was. So if you keep praying for John, please. Thanks. Um, we'll pray for John and the family later on in the service. Uh, Claire, thank you. I've got three. Um, the first one is, you've seen something up on the board. I hope it's on the notices as well. Craig is doing a, the, a men's walk in aid of hospice care. It seems quite apt at the moment. Um, it just popped up on his Facebook about a walk for hospice care. The official one is nine miles in Exeter. He didn't think that was enough of a challenge for him. Um, plus, we're actually not around on the 9th of March. So he's doing it the week later, and he's walking from Copplestone to O'Campton. So it's roughly 17 miles, taking on along the back roads. Um, so if you would like to sponsor him to do a 17-mile walk in aid of hospice care, then you can either go on the link, which is on the notices, or if you go to Just Giving and search for his name, you should be able to find him, or there is a paper sheet in the lobby area. So you can just write down your details out there if you wish to. Um, we obviously are... At very grateful for all the donations that received at Dad's um, Thanksgiving service. We haven't got a total figure, but it was over a thousand pound on the day, which we were absolutely blown away with. So we realised that people have already given, but if you would like to sponsor Craig, then that would be great. Um, secondly, Claire and I are trying to organise this talent evening. We have a few suggestions at the moment of people who are willing to do things, but if you think you could do something, however small, please let us know, and then we can try and get a programme together. And thirdly, I've just looked in the box for favourite songs for next week. There's only one song so far, so it's going to be a really short service. So if you have a favourite song, we've put bits of paper out there. Please write your song down and put it in the post box, and then Chris will collect them at some point. Thank you. Is there any other extras which aren't on the notice sheet? No, nope, right, we'll start. So if it's going to be a short service next week, means, Paul, we can go on and be a long service this week. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to pray for the collection which has been taken in the lobby on your way in. Dear loving Father, thank you for the collection that's uh, been freely given this morning. We just thank you for our wealth that we've been given. And we just hope that we can uh, just give a small part of that back for the use in this area and for the support of your work in this area and further afield. Amen. Um, so, we're going to finally start our service this morning by singing, Oh, Praise the Name. I cast my mind to Calvary, where Jesus led. Save. 
Before the children leave us, um, I'm not going to have a children's talk this morning because I like to include everybody. So, shocking fact, we are halfway through the academic year. So, if you're in year nine, you're only halfway of the way now from year ten, and it's gone so fast. So, children, in the last, oh, I don't know, six months, what have you done that you wish you hadn't done? What do you regret? I regret that I got a cold from Louise, which I've still not got rid of. Ollie, what do you regret? Louise says she regrets going to school. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody enjoy going to school? Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, thank you. <laughs> so, we look back and there's things that we think, oh, I don't want to do that. 
That's me every morning. Um, so what are we looking forward to? Lucy. I find it hard to believe with a girl like you that, that you like gymnastics. And <laughs> so that'll be really good then. So you're really looking forward to that. Brilliant. Anybody else looking forward to something? Ah, uh, sure. Yeah, it'll be the summer soon. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Lily. Sorry, e Evie. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> me too. Um, it's no. raining. Yes. <laughs> Yes, brilliant. Um, James? Yes, of course. But don't worry, James. You'll be... You'll smash it. You're brilliant. Better than your sister. <laughs> <laughs> Emmeline? Sorry? Yes. Yeah. So... We're all looking forward to things. And you know what? God says in the Bible that, you know, in, that these things will always happen. So we're going through a really horrible wet time at the moment. But he says, you know, seed time and harvest, summer and winter. So though we always go through low times and we're not feeling so good and we look back at those. And actually, I found that even though we go through lots of really sad times and low times, if we look forward to the really good times, when we look back, we think, how on earth did we manage to get through those really bad times? And it's because, I expect you've heard of the footsteps across the beach. So last Sunday, Louise and I took a Sunday off and we went to the beach. And do you know the best time to go to the beach? Don't go in June or July or August or September. Go in February when it's raining. There was no one there, and it was howling a gale, but it was so refreshing and so nice. And we walked across the beach, and there was footsteps across the beach. And in the footsteps thing, it says that through life, there was two sets of footsteps. And then every so often, there was only one set. And the person who was observing this, he said, you know, how come in my difficult times... You weren't with me, God. And God said to this person, I was with you. I was holding you up and carrying you. So when things are really difficult, you're not leaving two sets of footsteps because God is holding you up and carrying you and helping you through those really difficult times. So I've got difficult times coming up. I've got pesky sheep to lamb. And I said to Claire yesterday in a... Um, a WhatsApp, the lambing doesn't get any better. We've had all living lambs, and we know it's going to be difficult, and we know that we're going to have problems, but we just pray that God will help us through those difficult problems and hold us up. So just take that with you, that God is always there. When we've got things that aren't so good and not going so well, look forward to the things that are going to go well. Look forward to summer holidays. Look forward to celebrating birthdays. I, my birthday this week, if anybody wants to know. I'm only 40, 42. It's Evie's birthday this week. How old are you, Evie? 10. I, oh, today. Oh, perhaps we ought to sing happy birthday. Has anybody else got a birthday this week? Gordon. I reckon Evie and... Evie and I probably don't even e equal your age, do we? <laughs> anyway, right, we're going to sing happy birthday to Gordon, Philip, and Evie. Claire. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Right, I love dropping people in it. Kids, children, because kids are small goats. Um, children, what is your favourite song to sing in church at the moment? And you'll be able to sing it. And you've only got 
half a minute. Jess, have you got one? You don't have to sing it. We're going to get Claire to play it. Right. Could we have Build Your Kingdom here, please? And whilst they're all preparing to do it, we're going to ask Paul to come up and share some exciting news, some sad news, and some whatever news. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Well, well, I have three things to say as well. Now, the first one is that if there are people who worship with us here regularly, and you know and love the Lord Jesus, and you're not a member of this church, I would love to bring you into membership. Uh, so if that's you, uh, please come and have a word with me afterwards. We can arrange a meeting and get together and talk about the implications. Sometimes people say to me, I don't see why I should become a member. What have I to get out of it? Well, look, the Christian faith is not about what you get out of it. It's not about what you get out of it. It's about saying, I take my stand for Christ. Here, amongst the other friends of Jesus, I nail my colours to the mast. This is where, for the time being, uh, maybe longer, uh, God has placed me, and I'm going to nail my colours to the mast, and I'm going to take a stand for Christ, and I'm going to confess him before men, and I'm going to be part of the church here. In the first disciples, it says in Acts 2, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The number was important. The number is important. So there were people who said, count me in. And that's what being a member means for me. And I'd love to bring you into membership. That's the first thing. The second thing is, when was it? Was it Thursday, Roger? It seems a long time ago. But on Thursday, uh, Peter and Carol Brown visited us here. Uh, they are, Peter's the Methodist minister, Carol's his wife, and they came to meet the leaders of the various churches and have a look round and get the feel of the thing. Um, uh, I want to say thank you to the leaders of the various churches, some people here who did that. I want to thank uh, Roger and the other circuit stewards. It was a very full day for them. I came over and met them as, as well. Um, so I want to say thank you for that. And we're really delighted to say that the uh, uh, invitation committee extended an invitation to Peter Brown to become our minister here from September, and he accepted. So that's a wonderful thing. So Peter Brown and his subject to conference, jobs at the Methodist Conference agree, and I don't think there's a problem there, um, uh, they will be coming amongst you from the 1st of September. So please remember them in your prayers as we go forward. And that was the second thing. The third thing is um, the project worker uh, who was employed as part of the project in this circuit has, um, this is quite an important, just somebody, yeah, 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 catch up. Um, uh, the project worker who was employed as, as, uh, as you know, by some people here and working in Mortchard as well and, and, uh, and Witheridge, uh, 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 as, uh, ceased to be employed on Friday. She came to the end of her time. And we're meeting this coming week, the management committee are meeting this coming week to think about where we go from here, uh, the shape of the future employee and who's going to cover and all those kind of issues. So we're, we've got our finger on the pulse of it now, but we wanted to bring you up to date. Okay. Oh, I did forget another notice. If anybody's passing on Thursday, there is a funeral here on Thursday. Um, midday, Linda, something like that? Yeah, uh, so yeah. Um, just to remember that. Right, musicians, are you ready? So by popular demand, we are going to sing Build Your Church. We are your 
church. We need your power in us. We seek your kingdom first. We hunger and we thirst. We refuse to waste our lives for your joy and prize. To see the captive hearts released, the hurt, the sick, the for the uh, children as they leave. Dear loving Father, thank you so much for our young people here in this church. Just be with their leaders now, their teachers and their helpers as you um, lay on their hearts your love and your forgiveness. Amen. So we were out on uh, Friday night and normally I messaged the music group with the songs. I didn't do that until Thursday. Friday, I couldn't think of what I was going to do. Uh, we came and met the new minister. I thought, oh, I'll get inspiration there. And I did get some inspiration. But then when we met with our friends, they said, oh, what about this? What about that? And they were talking about devotionals. Now, I'm quite, I don't mind being open. I've got a devotional book, but I'm not that devotional. I uh, dipping in and out of devotions. So I thought I'd look up today's uh, devotional in my uh, devotional book and it was exactly the same thing as Peter Brown has spoken on Thursday which was about waiting and listening to what God's got to say waiting for an answer from God and uh, oh my goodness this whole stationing thing has been a bit of a wait because some of you won't know but Peter was very high on the list when the boss men Roger and all the people, the bosses of the circuit, 
when they looked at him, he was very high on the list. So I think this is a real waiting for an answer from God. And, uh, you know, I think perhaps this is what I was going along just for a couple of moments this morning before we hand over to uh, Paul. So I can remember when we got married and didn't really know what we were going to do. And we were lucky enough to... Uh, to tender for a farm and get a farm. And then 12 months later, we got another farm, which then brought all sorts of problems because it was so much weight of work and everything was a rush. We didn't have time to wait for anything. It was a rush. And I can remember rushing at fencing, cutting corners instead of cutting hedges and <sighs> failing to do the correct sort of um, preparations. Uh, which, you know, some people know takes much longer than the actual job. Um, for example, I know that uh, whenever we do any alteration work, which seems to be every single week with Louise, um, and any minor house improvement in our house or decor sort of upgrade always seems to be a major issue, but that's what comes with living in a 400-year-old house made of straw, mud, and stones. But back, you know, back to the land, those rushing times for those fences don't often show up. But then after five, six years, some of those shortcuts started to become a little bit available with wire getting a bit slack, posts popping out. And my real pet hate, gates that don't swing because it wasn't done properly in the beginning. Perhaps if we'd been more sort of diligent when we'd done the job, our work would have been uh, still as good as when we'd done it. And then what my devotional then went on to say was that uh, the Lord said that in Lamentations 3.25, the Lord is good to those who hope, whose hope is in him, to the one who seeks him. And in uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.24, Faith is he that calleth you, who will also do it. So it's just reminding me that God is faithful, and he's trustworthy, and he will fulfill his calling to each and every one of us each day, and he'll guard us, and he'll watch over us, and he'll protect us. And... Um, I'm just thinking now, as we move into a short time of prayer, about all these things and how we should be waiting on God, praying, but waiting for his answer. And as uh, Peter Brown spoke to us as leaders on Thursday, he was saying about listening for God's uh, voice in the in this day and age where so many people say oh it's the end days it's this it's that but actually we should be looking beyond the fire and beyond the the tornado and beyond the flood and actually looking to what God is speaking to us so I want us to now uh, join in prayer um, I'm going to do the same as we done last time which is where I want us to I'm going to pray for ourselves to start with because I always think, you know, if things aren't right with ourselves, how can we then move on and pray for others? So we're going to, I'm going to start by praying for ourselves and then have a short break. And if anybody wants to pray or remember anybody in prayer, please, I'll leave a short break. And then we'll move on to family, church, this community and the world after that. So if we could just pray together. Dear loving Father, I'd just like to thank you again that we can come here this morning. And firstly, I'd like to pray for ourselves and just pray and thank you that you've looked after each one of us and encouraged us and kept us reasonably healthy. And we just thank you that your steadfast love is all around us. I'd like to pray for our families especially at this time, we'd like to just pray for the Dallin family and especially for uh, Julie and just be with her at this time. We'd like to also really pray for Claire and for Stuart and their families. And also remember John Harford 
and remember his wife and the children as well in this time and just pray that um, for the skill of the surgeons to mend him up and bring him back to us safely as soon as possible and we just thank you for other members of our families who aren't so well at the moment we just pray for your healing hand just like to pray for our church we just thank you that we are so united here in this church and although lots of us have different ideas we do have a common goal and we love you and we love to serve you and we would love to share your word in this area we just thank you for the opportunities that we get day by day and help us and strengthen us as we try to shine your light into this community. Now, Lord, I know just pray for the world. Lord, we've just got so many wars and disputes going on. We just pray that your hand will be in those areas trying to calm things down where men are fighting and killing and abusing and just everything that saddens your heart we just pray that you'll be in those situations and somehow that man can sort out their differences and come to some sort of peace we just really pray at this time for the innocent people who are caught up in those conflicts and don't really know what's going on we just pray for those organizations that are looking after refugees helping to feed children and families who've lost loved ones and and really can't see a way out of these situations and in closing lord I'd just like to pray now the lord's prayer our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is kingdom, power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So uh, we're going to sing again um, now in a moment. I'm going to just pray for Paul because Paul's going to come and take the rest of the service after this hymn. So, dear loving Father, we thank you for Paul. And we thank you that there is a light at the end of the tunnel for Paul because we've got a minister. And Paul has led us so safely, uh, faithfully now over the last few months. And we just thank you for his ministry to us. And we just pray that you'll be with him now and just give us all receptive hearts to hear what he has to bring to us and that we can take it in let it soak in and act on it amen so we're going to sing now and then paul's going to join us and we're going to sing my jesus my savior
sing power and majesty praise to the king mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name I'll sing for joy at the work of your hands forever I'll love you forever I'll stand nothing compares to the promise I have in you my Jesus my Savior Lord there is none like you all of my days I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. My comfort, my shelter, tower of refuge and strength. Let every breath, all that I am, never cease to worship. to the Lord, all the earth, let us sing, power and majesty, praise to the King, mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name, I'll sing for joy at the words of your hands, forever I'll love you forever. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. I'm going to read from St. Mark's Gospel. Uh, chapter 10, and beginning at verse 40, a very familiar story. I'll read it and then I'll pray and then we'll try and unpack it a bit. Then they came to Jericho. They refers to Jesus, his disciples, and quite a crowd who had gathered around him. As Jesus and his disciples, together with a large crowd, were leaving the city, a blind man, Bartimaeus, that is, the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him. So they called the blind man, Cheer up on your feet, he's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet, and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, said Jesus, your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Just a prayer. Our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word. And we pray now that your Holy Spirit, who inspired the writing of Scripture, would come and apply its great truth to each of our lives. That from this written word, by the spoken word, we may once again be able to encounter the living word, even our Lord Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. It's interesting that all the gospel writers who record this story tell us that it happened at Jericho. And there's a name to conjure with. A name that rings bells in the minds of anybody who knows anything about the Old Testament a place where walls came tumbling down, a place where God showed up. 
and God shows up again today on this day. So there's this, we need to picture the scene, there's this crowd of people. Um, those of you who are familiar with the New Testament will know that we're in the 10th chapter of St. Mark's Gospel, the 11th chapter, uh, is the triumphal entry into Jerusalem. So Jesus' ministry is at its peak in terms of popularity. He's been going three years and gradually more and more people have become attracted to him. Not committed, but attracted. And these people are attracted to him. There's a great crowd of people as they move through Jericho and on to Jerusalem. It's a funny thing about popular people that other people tend to be around them. Their group is. They're not committed. They just like to bask in reflected glory. That's what these people were like. And they move along. And as they're about to leave Jericho, there's this man. Um, we identify him by his name, Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus. So clearly, the gospel writers wanted the reader to have the facts to be able to check them out. He's a beggar. He's blind. So you need to picture that scene. There's no paved roads, no tarmac. We have tarmac today, although it's not a lot of use. <laughs> um, there's no tarmac, it's dust. And um, he can't see, but people pass that way all day, every day. And he sits at the roadside, begging. You need to feel the contrast of this. Here is this crowd of people who are fawning on Jesus basking in reflected glory who want to feel that they're quite somebody because they're with him. And in contrast, there's this man who is a beggar whose whole life has been spent in the dirt, in the gutter, This blind man cannot, of course, see what's happening. But he hears a bit of commotion and he asks what's going on. It's a really interesting thing that when the crowd respond to his inquiry, they say, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. When he responds and calls out, he doesn't say Jesus of Nazareth. He says, Jesus, son of David. That's very interesting. Because son of David is a title from the Old Testament for the Messiah. So it helps us to understand that this man must have had what we would call background knowledge of Jesus. He wasn't in the same bracket as the people who were in the crowd. He had a degree of confidence that this person whom they called Jesus of Nazareth was in fact the Messiah. 
when he calls out, the crowd, the people, the groupies want him to be quiet because actually he's upsetting their attention from Jesus. Actually, they believe, boy, this is really powerful. They believe that he doesn't matter, that they are the ones who matter. But of all the people Jesus could call to himself, this blind man is the one. Um, you can't get the inflection of the voice in the printed word. But when they say, he's calling you, I think they say, he's calling you, you. But that's what happens. He calls him. And when he, when he comes to Jesus, what Mark tells us is that he leaves his cloak. Now, what you need to understand is that the cloak was not just to keep him warm. The cloak was what he spread to catch the gifts that people threw. You sometimes see this in large cities nowadays. I've seen it in London where somebody will be begging and they will spread out in front of them um, some blanket or something. And people who pass throw gifts, arms, onto the blanket. This man had the added disadvantage that he was blind. So when people throw something, if there wasn't something there for them to throw them on, he might miss it. So he has the cloak and he takes his cloak and he lays it in front so he knows where his boundary is. Do you see? The cloak was the tool of his trade. So it's very interesting that he left it. He was saying, I'm done with this. He was saying, this is my moment. Jesus has his moment for everybody. Um, it might just be the providence of God that this is his moment for you. For the first time or for the umpteenth time. It's very powerful when uh, Mark tells us uh, they said to him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. That's the phrase they use, passing by. Uh, that means um, he, he wasn't there and then he's there and then he's not there. He's passing. When somebody's passing you have to catch them on the route. He caught him. Uh, well, I'm not sure who caught who, really. But there was this encounter. Um, there's a lovely story told about uh, uh, Dwight L. Moody, the great evangelist who came to uh, the UK. Uh, he conducted... Um, various meetings in various places and whilst he was in London the person who organised this uh, trip uh, invited him to go and speak uh, one afternoon in the workhouse we thank God don't have workhouses now but they used to have workhouses in Victorian England and he went to speak at a workhouse and um, actually he preached on this text Jesus of Nazareth was passing by and, and he said he said, uh, Jesus from Nazareth is passing by here today. And he uh, 
preached on this story with such power that there was uh, somebody at the back of the room uh, uh, who was in the workhouse and who cried out, Do not pass me by! Uh, there was somebody on the platform with uh, Dwight L. Moody who heard him say that, and that phrase rang in his mind. And he went home and wrote a hymn uh, that we used to sing, uh, Pass me not, O gentle Saviour. Hear my humble cry, while on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. Um, whenever you gather for worship, Jesus is passing by. Uh, please, please don't let the opportunity slip. It's interesting that you asked about regrets. I don't want you to live with the regret of letting it pass. And then there's that powerful question. What do you want me to do for you? Bye. I wonder... I wonder if uh, the Lord Jesus came in here this morning and sat next to you and just put his hand on yours and said, what do you want me to do for you? I wonder what we would say. And maybe he wants us to be more specific. So many of our prayers are so general, we don't know whether they're answered or not, actually. So maybe for you this morning, he's saying, what would you like me to do for you? What really would make a difference? What really matters for you? What area of your life is there? where the touch of Christ would make all the difference in the world. I don't understand what happened at that point, but I believe it. Um, the man who was blind, uh, we think, all his life, um, was made whole again. I don't understand it, but I know that that's what happens when Jesus comes. Um, he makes everything different. Uh, if I might just be allowed a word of testimony. I could tell you my story at some length, we don't have the time for that. But I need to say to you that um, there was a night uh, when I couldn't sleep. I had attended a Methodist church, a, a big Methodist church, in the centre of an industrial north country city. Um, and I had heard somebody talk about the change that Jesus brings about in a person's life. Uh, not just belonging to a church, not just throwing your weight in with it. it. Not that. I mean, that's very, very good. We thank God for that. But actually being transformed. I'd heard somebody speak about that. And I went home and I couldn't sleep. And... Um, It was about two o'clock in the morning, and uh, I got out of bed, and I said, I don't really know, I don't really know whether you're there or not, but if you are, and if what this poor preacher says is true, would you please do it for me? And I went to sleep. 
I need you to know that when I got up in the morning, everything was different. Everything seemed to be different. What had happened is not that everything had changed, but that I had changed. I couldn't understand it. I went to see the minister. I said to him, what's happened to me? He said, oh, you've been converted. <laughs> As though that was what normally happened. <laughs> well, that's what should normally happen. And um, like this man, I followed on the way. Uh, I followed on the way uh, as he did because he wanted always to be close to the Saviour. <laughs> he just needed a sustaining relationship. That's what this is about. A sustaining relationship with Jesus. So we're going to be quiet and still now for a moment. I'm going to pray, then we're going to sing, and then we're going to gather around the Lord's table and share bread and wine together. So let's be quiet. Lord, we thank you so much for this man long ago. And we thank you for those who recorded this story. And thank you for the tremendous truth that when Christ invades our lives, nothing remains the same. We place our lives before you, Lord, with all their failure and regret but underneath that, their deep desire to be all that you can make us. So we ask that as we celebrate the wonder of your love demonstrated on a cross and through bread and wine, you'll allow your transforming love to transform us once again. For your love's sake. Amen. We sing, Lord Jesus Christ.
pray, loving Lord, that every step we take along the road that follows you may be a step nearer your transforming power in our lives, knowing that moment by moment we are being transformed so that the image of Jesus shines within for your love's sake. Amen. And can it be that I should gain an interest in the Saviour's blood?
go into God's world in the power of God's Spirit to live and work to God's praise and glory. May the God of all hope fill you with joy and peace in believing and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be amongst you now and remain with you always. For Jesus' sake, amen.